Hello students, I am back again with another video. In the last video, we have seen the golden rule of law of demand. We have also seen the assumptions of law of demand as well as the exceptions of law of demand. Now, there is a tricky angle of law of demand and it is called shift in demand curve. You need to understand the shift in demand curve because that is an essential part of law of demand, but that is a slightly distinguished uh, topic than uh, law of demand. So what really means shift in demand curve? Basically in the law of demand we have seen that there is an inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded. Yeah, so one goes up, one goes down, one goes down, another goes up. There is an inverse relationship. So in that law of demand we are evaluating the relationship between price and quantity demanded. But what about the other factors? Remember I told you yesterday that demand for goods or commodity is affected by uh, not only price but so many other factors. So in the shift and demand curve, we are evaluating the relationship uh, between quantity demanded and the other factors. Yeah, other factors such as income, substitute goods, the price of substitute goods, beg your pardon, and uh, complements, uh, goods and stuff like that. So we will we will try to evaluate the relationship between uh, quantity demanded and the other factors which we have assumed in the law of demand that they remain constant in order to to get the law of the demand right right now the thing is that there are two scenarios either your original uh, demand curve will move to its right or your original demand curve can move to its left we have remember two scenarios I repeat the original demand curve can move to its right or the original demand curve can move to its left when does that happen? Simple. There are various reasons that can move the demand curve to its right. What happens if there is an increase in the income of the customers? See, when the price was $15, the quantity demanded was 30 units, right? Suddenly, you find that the customer's income has increased. So, now, the quantity demanded will also get increased. Even though there is no change in the price, remember, the price is 15, but since the income of the customers have increased, now there is a more quantity demanded than before. So we have a new demand curve here. So the demand curve has moved to its right because there, is, there was an increase in the uh, income of the customers. Yeah. Remember, I am repeating again, the price was unchanged, only the demand curve moved to its right because of the change in other factors, positive change in other factors. Then there is another factor which can lead to demand curve uh, move to its right and that is substitute goods becomes more expensive. What do I mean by that? See, Coke and Pepsi are substitutes. Yeah. So imagine this demand, uh, this, this graph illustrates the uh, price and quantity demanded of Coke. So at the price of 15, 30 units were uh, quantity demanded yeah now what happens if suddenly Pepsi raises their price Pepsi Pepsi increases their price so now those customers who were earlier consuming Pepsi want to switch over to coke so even though we have not increased or decreased our price our price is same our price is stable but since our substitute product has increased their price that means now we have got more demand for our product. Is that clear? So our price is unchanged. We haven't done anything to our price. But since our substitute has done something to its price, they have increased uh, their price. That means we have got increase in our quantity demanded for our good goods and services as well. So now instead of 30, we have got 50 units that is going to be uh, sold at the same price because there was uh, an increase in substitute goods uh, price yeah then there is third very important point that needs to be uh, taken into consideration and that's complement complement goods becomes uh, cheap see whiteboard and whiteboard marker they are complement goods you 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 need both of them yeah in order to satisfy your human wants you cannot do without just one you cannot do with just one item you have to have both whiteboard and marker pen so what happens tomorrow if the the price of the whiteboard marker drops down dramatically. If it is being sold in the market today for $150, maybe tomorrow you find it for only $70 or $80.
Then, since the whiteboard, uh, the, the price of whiteboard has fallen dramatically in the market, that will increase the, the, the demand for uh, marker pens as well in the market. Because remember, the, the complement goods has fallen down. The price of the complement goods has fallen down in the market. So that is going to increase the price of marker pens in the market. So these are the three uh, main factors. There are so many factors, but let's let's try to understand three of them and that will make the scenario clearer in your mind. So these are the factors that can move our original demand curve. Remember, that was the original demand curve. Now, this is the new demand curve D1 which is illustrated as D1 in the diagram. So there are there are certain factors that can that can move our demand curve to its right, uh, uh, giving us a new demand curve that is D1. Now, another scenario, original demand curve can move to its left. When does that happen? If you have understood this point, this becomes very easy and simple to understand for you. Income goes down. What happens if customer's income goes down? Dramatically, your income uh, has decreased. Earlier you used to earn $2,000 every month. Now you are only earning $1,500 every month. So before you were consuming and demanding 30 units, now you are only demanding 10 units. Even though there is no change uh, in the price, we have not increased the price. It is same. But since the disposable, uh, since the income of the consumers have fallen sharply and dramatically, they are going to consume and demand less units than before. Then substitute goods becomes less expensive. Same example again, Coke and Pepsi. Imagine this is the scenario for Coke. What happens if Pepsi tomorrow uh, in the morning drops down their price dramatically? So those customers who are consuming Coke now, they will switch over to Pepsi. So uh, earlier 30 units were demanded. The price is same. There is no change in the price, but now only 10 units will be demanded because our Sub, uh, substitute goods they have dropped, the, dropped down their price and third uh, important point is complement becomes expensive same example again whiteboard and marker pen what happens tomorrow if whiteboard becomes expensive if it is being sold in the market at $150 today tomorrow you go to the market and it is being sold at $250 so there is a dramatic shift in the price there is a dramatic increase in the price of whiteboard that will decrease the quantity demanded of whiteboard marker pens in the market. So even though the, the price hasn't changed, we haven't done anything to the price, but since the complement good has become expensive now, so the whiteboard marker will be sold lesser now. Earlier it used to be sold 30 units, now it is going to be sold only 10 units. So you need to distinguish shift in demand curve with the law of demand. Yeah, This is an important component of law of demand itself, but you have to remember shift in demand curve uh, differently. You have to understand shift in demand curve differently. If you understand law of demand, assumptions of law of demand and uh, exceptions of law of demand. And if you have understood both the scenarios as far as shift in demand curve is concerned, when it moves to its uh, right and when it moves to its left, then you are all good to go with uh, law of demand as long as as far as law of demand is concerned. Uh, I will be uploading some more videos uh, sooner. Keep watching me. You can follow me as mentioned you earlier. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and LinkedIn. Thanks for watching my video. Thank you.